What's up there, YouTube? This is Steve here from Team Rhino. I was doing my uh, Quackamuru uh, update. Um, I've tried a lot of builds, and um, this became like this is my favorite, just because the uh, it's kind of like a rock um, stun beast warrior beatdown like style. Um, Quackamurus are a little hard to run, you know, against most decks that are like you know high like top tiers. But uh, I find that this one actually runs pretty consistent, and um, yeah. All right, so just to get started, um, well, just so you know, um, still some merch in this deck is awesome. So yeah, okay. Uh, first things first, two Maximuses. Uh, these guys are freaking awesome. They're like, you remove the Iron Core to special from your hand. Once per turn, you can destroy any card in the field. Plus, he can also attack that turn. Um, 3,000 beat stick, 25 defense, 2,500 defense. Um, eight stars. He uh, just he runs shit over and he pops stuff. He he's good. Um, only thing about him is instead of having to reveal at the end of the turn, um, you have to actually discard just one card from hand, which is actually not too bad. This deck pluses off of Beast Warrior stuff. Um, you'll see here later. Okay. Next thing after that is um, one of the awesome cards in the deck. Um, Kekinir or Knight. He helps pull out rank fours like nothing. Just reveal Iron Core, get level 4, exceed, or he's just a 4,000 beat stick. All you have to do at the end of the phase is to reveal the Warriors. Um, plus, he's just, I don't know, his effects are all just awesome all around. Um, the second Beast Warrior in the deck is two Crusaders. Um, these are only Kwakimiru Beast Warriors in here. Um, Crusader just, he's awesome as if, like, <coughs> there's a monster in your graveyard that you need. If you don't want to reborn it or call it, you can, and it also, if you don't have any Beast Warriors in your hand and you ho and you think you have one in your grave, you attack with him if you're, if he, if he destroys your opponent's monster by battle, you get to add one monster from your graveyard to your hand that's Quackimiru, so just get the Beast Warrior so you don't have to destroy him at the end phase. Plus it's a 1900 beat stick, and it's good. Alright, on to the rock stun part. We run three Guardians. Um... In my opinion, Guardians are my favorite over the uh, walls and the uh, Sandman's just because he's he negates the monsters effects, and I think that's really crucial nowadays with um, like White Swords and stuff. He just he also helps form part of a lockdown. If you have like Wall Guardians and Roach and uh, the other one, they you know they kind of lock your phone down. It's not like a I don't want any people that's like crow to be like this deck sucks, but it's still, it's pretty decent. I mean, it's not a bad deck either. Um, you have uh, your two walls, you know, to negate the spells. 1900 beat sticks. Two Sandmans. Uh, 1900 beat sticks to traps. Um, also, all the rock ones, you have to reveal rocks. So, the more, like, there's a uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rocks in here in this deck. So, that's pretty, pretty easy to keep them. Then you have one prototype. You don't have to reveal for this. It's 1800 attack, 18 defense, so he can actually be set face down on like the most of them. Um, his effect is if he's destroyed, or uh, if Quackimir is destroyed at the end phase, you get a token that's 1800 attack, 1800 defense, <laughs> stars. His uh, secondary effect is if if a Quackimir will be destroyed, you can destroy him instead. So he's like a like a tribute fodder for Quackimir's effect if you really don't want to discard for it. So there's all the rock. Well, one more rock. Yeah, Boulder, he just, he's just in there because he's another target for, uh, um, Quackamiru, uh, <coughs> and if you don't want to get, like, something super good. He's okay, he searches, um, when he's a sure battle, you get to add Iron Core to your hand or uh, a Quackamiru of level 4 or lower, which he can search anything in here except for Maximuses and stuff, whatever. Alright, on to a few more monsters. One Summoner Monk. Um, I'm trying to find room for two just because I think he makes the deck more consistent. Um, you discard Iron Cores with him, which is not a bad thing at all. Um, you can discard any spells at all, you know, get a rare level four because they're all level fours except for um, Maximus. And exceed for rank fours. Alright, the last part of the deck, which makes the deck much, much more consistent and um, able to be played, in my opinion, is um, three Tengus. I'm glad they didn't get banned. I think he's a good card. He's good to go in a lot of decks. He helps make this deck a little con more consistent. He keeps it alive for a few. Um, he's a beast warrior. 
which comes into play. And plus, he, you know, he's just he's tingy, he's good. <laughs> Alright, so on the spells, you have three of these, which can be, um, these can be like summon monk fodder, you reveal it for the effects of a few cards in here, and you know, stuff like that. It's uh, just a good card. Uh, one of the quackery. It's Prim for of Destruction. You reveal one iron core to uh, activate this. Um, select one monster on the field, destroy it, both players take a thousand damage. It's pretty good. Monster Born. Iron Core Immediate Disposal. Sends one iron core from your deck to your grave. Oh, I guess I got another one of these. My bad. It's a good card. <laughs> core Overlock powers up all Quackery Mirrors by 500. And if you discard Iron Core, you uh, power up by a thousand, which is pretty freaking sweet because there are. They're pretty much they're all pretty much beat sticks already. Dark hole staple. Um, this card I just put in. I thought it would make the deck not as good. I found out to be wrong. This card. Um, I need I need more. I, I need one more of these. Um, it's made the deck much much more consistent. Um, it just it rocks. It's it's freaking help. It helps to get iron cores. If you don't have one, just activate that. It's even better than disposal. One sword for stall, because sometimes you need it with this deck. Core compression, it's pretty much like like uh, a little darkness for the deck. You reveal iron core, discard an eye, click mirror monster, and draw two cards. Pretty much, okay, heavy storm, just because it's a must have now. Um, on the traps, um, the, the best trap in the deck by far, to, my, to me, is Horn of the Fan Beast. Um, this not only powers up all the Beast Warriors in here, which is like, there's like, a, there's like eight Beast Warriors. Um, that powers them up by 800 each, and then it gives you draw power. Um, the best part about that is, these will help you get the control in your hand that you need. Say you have a rock on the field and a Beast Warrior. You activate this, put it to the Beast Warrior. You have a Beast Warrior in your hand, or a rock in your hand, per se, and you need one or the other. You can try to use these to put the other one in your hand so you don't have to destroy one of your monsters. And usually, I don't even really use this for that reason, but that's an option. It helps get pluses to your hand, which is awesome for the deck. And any deck, really. Um, another good card in the deck is Iron Core Luster. Um, only run two. I, I probably might put this down to one just because I, I try not to rely on Iron Core too much. I mean, of course I'm going to because it's quite Mirrors, but um, I don't know. It's a good card, it's pretty much dark by, but your opponent don't draw. And yeah, that just makes it really good. TT Call, which is actually good. There's an like Iron Core version of this, but Call Hunt is just much better. Um, okay, two MST, or two Mirror Forces. Um, the reason this is two Mirror Forces is because uh, I had limited to one, but this is a um, Cracking Mirror Shield. Quaking Mirror Shield is pretty much Mirror Force in the fact that, like, when your opponent declares an attack with Quaking Mirror Shield, if you have two more Iron Cores in the grave, just draw a face-up attack monsters your opponent patrols. So, pretty much two Mirror Forces. Um, I, I ran, like, three of these and one of these because I thought it was good, but that's just way too much. I tried two, too much still, and... Then I drew, I got one of each, so it's good, because, I mean, if Mirror Force is at three, then it'd be perfect, because then you don't have to have the two in a grave, but this in the first turn is usually a dead draw. Um, yeah, um, so, um, I'm going to be doing more deck profiles of, um, decks I have. I have a Spellcaster Counter deck, kind of, it's not really like a Spellcaster Counter, it's like a, it's a hybrid between Spellcaster Counters and, um, Dark Magician. It's, it's pretty, really, it's actually really well and consistent. I think um, I'm also going to do a battery in because I like to do battery in OTK. <laughs> I uh, OTK my friend today in the second turn. He went, I went, he went, I went, I won. <laughs> and then um, some other decks I'll do is when I get my Twilight running, I'll do that one. Um, what else? What else? What else? I have um, Junk Double Plants. I have my version of the six Sams. Um, I call them Macro uh, Sams. Or not macro um, dimensional Sam's. I use D Fissure and um, plus off of Shania's and Mizuho's and Lavier. Those cards just um, Lavier helps me thin the deck if uh, Gateway's on the field. I will 
Get what I need in the grave at the beginning. Activate defissure. Someone live here. air. Get my Shania's Mizuho's on the field. Tribute them. Tribute the Shania's. Put the Shania's out of play. Then just, yeah, I don't know, it's just good. <laughs> okay, well, um, this is Steve from Team Rhino. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Watch more of my deck profiles. I'm going to try to do one every two days. And if not, I might do one every day. It just really depends on how bored I get. But, yeah, peace out.